السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ آئی ہوپ آل آف یو گائز آر ڈوئنگ گریٹ سو ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ اے نیو سیکشن آف دی کیمرج سلیبس فار او لیولس کمپیوٹر سائنس اور آئی جی سی ایس ای او لیول سائنس وٹ ایور یو آر فالوئنگ اینی ویز بٹ بفور وی اسٹارٹ لیٹ می ٹیل یو اباؤٹ دا ٹاپیکل ورک بکس دیٹ آئی ہیو ڈیزائنڈ ایکسکلوزولی فار دا نیو سلیبس آئی ہیو کمپائل دیم پرسنلی اینڈ they would be very useful to you this is the paper one booklet as you can see it contains questions on all the topics the subtopics of uh, the subsections of uh, your new slavers the updated slavers as you know right now we don't have past papers available for the new slavers so this book this uh, topical workbook would be really very helpful to you either you are giving 2210 or you are giving 0478 and here is the mark scheme i have included carefully calibrated the mark scheme to match the pattern for uh, that is normally used by cambridge examiner so you won't have any problem in solve in um, learning from this book and let me show you a few glimpses this is section 1.1 as you can see there are a lot of questions 1.3 1.2.2 and last but not the least we have 5.3 cyber security and 6.3 artificial intelligence similarly the next book consists of topics and questions for paper 2 Algo algorithms programming and logic again i have included all the uh, a lot of possible questions for each and every section and subsection as you can see on your screen and i have included a mark scheme as well obviously without the mark scheme you won't be able to uh, really utilize this book and we have 7.1 pro program development life cycle then we have something like 7.7 dry running of an algorithm we have 8.3 file handling and section 10 boolean logic as you can see these are a few selected pages from the book from the workbook and as you can see i have included questions on each and every topic i have not missed a single topic so you won't have any problem preparing for your <coughs> CIs that are combined with the third book in the series that are the study notes which contains um, exclusive keywords for each and every topic and some questions are also included for your practice and for your guidance so ins inshallah you'll uh, the A star would not be so far away from you if you go through these three books now uh, so please go to the whatsapp number that is given in the dis description and place your order now early birds also get a free gift a free bag anyways coming back to our lecture uh, section 9 databases so here we go before we start discussing what are databases there are a few key terms that you should know the first one is a cell a cell is a single item in a data table then we have a field each column in a table inside a database is called a field or uh, and next one is a record a collection of field is called a record or you can say that each row in a table is called a record a table is a collection of fields and records columns and rows that is inside our database now uh, traditionally we have databases in the real world we have databases which consist of many tables but for the sake of uh, o levels at this stage of o levels the cambridge examiner only considers a single table database so you do not have to bother yourself with too much of a complexity and last but not the least what exactly is a database a database is a collection of one two or more tables that are connected with each other inside a single file dbms database management software uh, it is the software with the help of which you can create edit open save manage and update your databases for example jdb sql server ms access etc 
A database is a structured collection of data that allows people to extract information in a way that meets their needs. Uh, a data table may contain thousands and thousands of uh, entries, but obviously at a single time you will not be uh, wanting to see all those thousands of lines in front of you. So you can select based on filters, based on queries that what part of database you want to see. The data can include text, numbers, even pictures and anything that you can save on a computer. It can even include um, videos or mp3 files. And as, as we have discussed, a single table database only contains one table and that is the extent of your syllabus for O levels. Now the question is why do we need to uh, learn about databases? Why are they helpful? They are helpful. Uh, they prevent problems because if any changes or additions are made, it only has to be done once as data is consistent. Data is inside the uh, database is linked with each other. So you do not have to open multiple files and change them one after the other. You can just make the changes at any one point and it would reflect in the whole of the databases or all of the linked files or data uh, or tables. The same data is used by everyone so you do not have to create multiple copies rather you simply create views and every user even if you have hundreds of them in the company can see the same data. Data is only stored once uh, which means no data duplication. If you are going with the relational database again it is not exactly a, a part of your syllabus but uh, it is a benefit of databases that if you are storing your data in relational database then it uh, eliminates the chances of data duplicity means one aspect one information one field is only stored once in all of the database in all of the tables you do not have to repeat it for multiple tables and uh, what are databases used for to information to store information about people for example their name their address um, and so on such as the deta patient details in a hospital uh, details of student in a school patrons of a library members of a club to store information about things for example uh, stock inventory list cars to be sold books in a library uh, for example any inventory if you have a warehouse to store information about events for example hotel bookings results of races or any other sports or quiz competition list of guests at a wedding and so on there are many 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 things for which you can s u utilize a database the number of fields in a table is always fixed uh, they are decided when you are creating a database and then later on you can change them but it's always best not to do so as it can damage the already saved data or corrupt the already saved data in your data database a table uh, Whereas the number of records can increase or decrease when you enter new information into the database then a new record is made a new raw is added each time you make a new entry otherwise when you delete something then a raw or record is deleted. A table contains data about any one type of item or person or event and will be given uh, always be given a meaningful name for example uh, a table of teachers may be called faculty or teachers a table of doctors would be called doctors a table of books lent in a library called lent underscore books a table of students for let's say class 4c would be labeled as 4c and so on every record contains the same number of fields each field in a record contains a specific piece of information about that single item, person or event. Each field will have a meaningful name to identify the data stored in it. For example, the first name of a student field would be called first name. The student's second name field would be called family name. Uh, a student's father name would be called father name. Date of birth can be called as DOB. 
if you don't want to write the full student's address would be called address and the fee structure field would be called monthly fee and as you can see these all information would link to a single entity that is a student so for us for every student all of these information related to him or her would be stored in the database and the database would look something like this this is the name of the database student table uh, sorry the name of the table inside this database student table and this is the first name family name father name date of birth address monthly fees and over here will be having multiple entries depending on the number of students you have now just like when we are programming something in databases also we can apply validation and verification verification is applied very rarely in databases and uh, it is usually the work of uh, uh, whatever programming language you are using at the front end to design your software that whenever data comes in so you, you validate it before putting it into the database but if you are directly uh, working on the database like a database server then at places you have to apply validation to your databases whereas verification is you can verify the entered data into a database as well but it is uh, it is applied or it happens very rarely whereas validation is uh, implied quite often or more often than verification so before a database is actually used the developer will have to incorporate validation checks at, not at all the fields but at relevant or most important fields so the data entered is correct and wrong data is rejected for example in above student table monthly fees cannot be below zero this can be a range check you can apply a presence check a range check length check format check consistency check and type check now can all of the these checks presence range length and type check we have discussed as a part of uh, validation and verification in uh, chapter section 7 as well uh, consistency check is something new it basically checks that data is consistent as per any previous entry uh, for example if the state entered is Bangalore then the country chosen must be India for example if the state cho chosen is Texas then the country must be uh, America this means that when you enter something in a field that has consistency check on it then it would automatically cross check this data logically with the previous field or with the previously entered piece of information if you are choosing uh, Karachi then that means in, as a city as your home city then that means that uh, before ka choosing Karachi you should have chosen Sindh as your province or Pakistan as your country because Karachi cannot exist in any other country or it simply doesn't exist so this is known as consistency check if you are saying for example in a database if, an, if a person is saying that I earn 20,000 rupees per month from my company um, or from my job then that means he or she has to provide he, uh, some company name where he or she works okay there are these are some examples of the consistency check that the data being entered is accurately linked with the previous data and it is not illogical as compared to the previous entry this is a little bit of extra information because uh, we have basically heard the two names so it's better if we discuss a little bit about it that there are basically two types of databases flat file databases and relational databases flat file databases are those which only contain a single table and they store simple data formats and this is basically what the Cambridge examiner for O level uh, focuses on the database is not related to any other table or any other database and uh, this method of storing data is not really efficient and this may lead to problems like data duplication and data redundancy and input errors but 
well our hands are kind of tied over here we just simply have to go with this method as uh, this is what the syllabus is focuses on relational database is some our database which can have multiple tables in fact it actually has multiple tables if you don't have multiple tables then why would you name it as relational database and that tablets are always uh, tables are always linked with each, each other uh, so that the user can work on complex data structures uh, which involve multiple tables for example in a student database you can create a student information table and a student information table and uh, a student id would be the uh, would be an entry that would be unique with every student so you can use student ID to link the two tables together this special field uh, which has unique values in a t inside a table if you have a field inside a table that only contains unique values for each record and there is no chance for duplication in that field for example every student in a school has a different roll number or a different student ID and no two students in the history of a school can have the same ID number student ID number so that means no ma even if you have tens of thousands of students in your database all of them would be having a different student ID and no two students would have the same ID so such a field which only contains unique values is known as a primary key or can be chosen as a primary key a primary key in a database is simply such a field that only contain unique values this is the definition which you guys need to know whereas in reality a primary key is a key that contains unique value and it is used to link different tables in a relational database that is the actual real world definition of a primary key but for the sake of uh, o levels examination of computer science you only need to know this that a primary key is a field that only contains unique values and that's it a relational database does not allow uh, data duplication so it is more efficient and consistent than a flat file database now that was all about the ex extra information now let's get on with our syllabus ahead data types in a database a database normally has the same data types as any programming languages uh, again from one database package to another there is at times a slight difference of terminology but overall the basic data types are the same the first one is text or sometimes it is known as alphanumeric and it contains alphanumeric data then we have character or char which can contain a single character then we have boolean in some pan packages of databases such as ms access instead of boolean we call it as a yes no or a drop down or yes no lookup so a boolean is basically a data type which can only have two possible values and at a time you can only choose any one of them then we have integer or number basically in programming languages we call it as integer in uh, databases we mostly uh, prefer to it as numbers but even if you write uh, it as integer it's fine integer contains positive or negative whole numbers A real contains decimal numbers again in some databases it may be called as float date time is a special uh, you can say data type that is exclusive to databases and it can contain either it can store a date in m different formats or time in different formats or both of these things together such as when you uh, make a purchase at a superstore and you're given a printed bill then over there the time of the printing of the bill along with the date is printed over there so in storing such information uh, is done through having a field in your database that is of date time type then we have another special uh, field or data type that is only found in uh, databases that is known as auto number it is used for data which can include randomly generated numbers when are recorded as 
when a record is, as, uh, is added, for uh, this field cannot be changed. It is automatically populated. For example, serial, serial number. For example, registration number, product ID, student role number, etc. As these numbers are uh, consistent with each other, like roll numbers are always 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. There is no gap in between them, same as the case with at times, not always, but at times, same as the case with the registration number or product IDs. So, in such fields, we instead of populating them ourselves, we can apply uh, auto number over there so that we don't have to type them in, they'll be automatically populated. A new number would automatically be generated in sequence in ascending order without skipping any number. A simple counting number would be generated and play will be placed there which you would not be able to delete or change primary key as we have discussed it is important to be able to uniquely identify each record in a database so in order to do this we have a field that only contain unique values and it this field is called the primary key it can there can be no duplications in the primary key and it can uh, it can be an existing field in the database or at times none of the fields you have in your existing database contains unique values so at that time we introduce a new field in the database such as serial number such as product number such as product id and we apply at times we apply auto number on that field and make it as a primary key or you can as for the books you can make their isbn numbers their uh, primary key or inside a stock inventory database you can make the product barcode number as the primary key as no two products have the same barcode number next we have something that is known as sql structured query language it is the language it is the script it is the code that we run when we want to update edit retrieve data or delete data in our database means in that displays inside a table in a database sql scripts is a list of sql commands that perform a given task and they are often stored in a file so the script can be reused following are some of the sql statements and the first one is select and select keyword fetches specific fields from a table and as you can see it begins with the select keyword from from is the keyword that identifies that which table to get your data from where where is a keyword that specifies a condition that only fetch data that matches this particular condition only fields which meet the given condition are shown if you want to apply more than one conditions then you can use the logical operators and or or between the two conditions or three or four conditions then we have uh, another keyword that is known as order by it sorts the results in alphabetical order or num uh, numerical order and with the order by keyword you can use two attributes as ASC that stands for ascending order and DESC that stands for descending order then we have two functions in your syllabus one is known as sum function and it returns the sum of all the values in a field make sure that the field you are trying to s apply sum to only contains numeric data this can uh, not work on text data next function is count it counts the number of records where the field matches the specific criteria like it would simply tell you if you apply it on a student name field that uh, there are let's suppose 50 students who have uh, who are studying let's suppose uh, whose fees is greater than 2000 and so on now let's uh, try to solve an example question okay this question is actually from june 2015 paper 21 question 7 but uh, this was according to the old paper pattern and the old paper pattern old syllabus there used to be a 
query by example grid but I have uh, changed this question so that it can uh, work with SQL instead of the uh, query by example grid a database property was set up to show the price of properties for sale and the features of each property part of the database is shown below give the number of fields that are in each record that is quite simple simply count the number of columns 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so you in the answer you simply write 7 like this state which field you would choose for the primary key now we'll get back to our database and we'll inspect each field and we would see that is there any field that can contain or that does contain unique values yes brochure number it contains unique values whereas number of bedrooms number of bathrooms gar garden garage or even price can contain multiple values property type can also contain multiple values as you can even see over here house house apartment apartment house house and so on so brochure number sorry it's written just as an O you have to make sure that in your answer you write the same spelling as given in the database name or in the field names give a reason for choosing field this field it contains unique values it contains unique values State the data type you would choose for each of the following garage garage only so shows yes no yes no yes no so we can write it as boolean if we have a uh, field where there are only two possible values then for that we can use boolean data type like I've told you above as well number of bedrooms it contains numeric data so we would say either number or you can even examiner also accepts integer but according to uh, you can say the standards of actual databases and their softwares we always have a number database and not exactly the integer data type price in dollars you can write it as number or you can write it as currency as well currency is a special data type that is available in databases and what is special about this data type that if you have chosen currency for a specific field then whenever you enter a number in it it automatically shows the your chosen currency symbol along with it and plus it applies the uh, comma uh, according to uh, you know placement like uh, the com uh, in between your number uh, such as the comma to indicate th uh, hundreds millions and so on like if we ha uh, if you normally write something in a number data type uh, let's suppose you're trying to write uh, 10,000 it would be saved as this if you have uh, chosen currency data type then it would be written as this plus the symbol of your chosen currency would display along with it automatically you will not have to enter it so this is the difference between currency data type and number or integer data type anyways the Cambridge examiner doesn't really differentiates between currency or number data type so you can basically write any one of these both are accepted by the Cambridge examiner no harm okay the following SQL query is run select price and dollar brochure number from property 
where property type equals to house and number of bedrooms greater than two and number of bathrooms greater than two so over here uh, like I told you select is the first keyword that we use it basically means that extract my desired data from the table and display it to me and from is the keyword that tells the number of the name of the table that from which table you want after select we write down the names of the field we want to be displayed on the screen and after from we write the name of the table and then we write the keyword where when we have to apply condition or conditions to it such as over here we want that pro property type should be house number of bedrooms should be greater than two and number of bathrooms should be greater than two show what would be the output so for doing that first of all we'll apply these three uh, you can say uh, conditions one after the other to our database so let's go up now over here our first condition is that property type must be house so let's see how many houses uh, do we have in the property type one two three and four now the next condition was that the number of bedrooms should be greater than two okay over here the number of bedrooms is four so it satisfies the condition over here the number of bedrooms is greater than two it is three it also satisfies the condition whereas achha, over here the number of uh, bedroom is three it also satisfies the uh, our condition over here the number of bedroom is two but not greater than two so that means that this does not meet our condition so this will not this is not our desired result so you can simply erase this tick mark so right now we have three possible outcomes now let's check our last condition that number of bathrooms should be greater than two in the first one the number of bathrooms is two which is not greater than two so that means th this does not satisfy our condition in the third one as well number of bathrooms greater than two so, uh, okay I think this should be less than two cause we don't really have any uh, any value over here that has number of bathrooms less than two so I think this is a slight typing mistake on my part and this should be less than two I'll just uh, make the changes it should be like this okay now let's check how many of these have number of bathrooms less than two which also satisfy our this is the one that has one bathroom which is less than two this doesn't have less than two this doesn't have less than two as well so basically it means this is the record that meets all the three given conditions the property type is house number of bedrooms is greater than three and number of bathroom is less than two now how do we write the output we have to show the price and brochure number keep in mind price is written first in query so it would be displayed first no matter it is before a brochure number in the table or it is after so first of all we write down the price 250,000 we'll simply write it here then give some space and uh, next thing we have to write brochure number so this is the brochure number h23 and this is your answer this is how you write the answer for your query this would be the answer that would be shown as an output when you run this query next write a query to select and show the brochure number property type and price of all properties with a garage below 200,000 
so first of all we write the keyword select and what do we have to show we have to show brochure number and property type and what else we have to show price and dollar and from where from property where now what is the condition that you need to follow with a garage so basically what is the where garage equals to yes and what is the other condition that it should be below 200,000 and we have written our first condition now to write the second condition we have to write and if there was a choice between these two like it if it was written show all the properties with a garage um and uh, with a garage that uh, uh, or that cost below 200000 then we have written or in place of this and now we'll write our second condition price in dollar this is the name of the field below below means less than how much 200 1 2 now keep in mind that in, in text data we always apply inverted commas on the name that we are comparing on the piece of information whereas in numeric data we don't do that we have discussed this in our section 7 and 8 as well so i hope you know this and once your query has ended just put a semicolon and there you go easy that's it thank you so much If you have any problems feel free to contact me uh, put your questions or comments below do subscribe my channel and share it with your friends and please don't forget to buy yourself the uh, study pack which I'm offering before I run out of stock it would really be helpful for you tell your friends about it as well and I'll see you guys in the next lecture take care allah hafiz